Look at that. That is gross. What is going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're gonna to be starting on another project and no, I did not get another bike. We're actually gonna be rebuilding this little Razor Ground Force electric go-kart. I actually got this go-kart from my coworker, Anton. This unit's from 2010. This is the regular Ground Force, not the drift cart. So unfortunately the rear axle is not locked. You'll notice that the right wheel is significantly more worn out than the left side. That's because the motor only spins this wheel but we're going to change that since i'm planning on converting this into a drift cart currently it doesn't run the controller is completely toast and the batteries are super old you'll see they're actually bulging out of the bracket so those need to go in the trash this motor i'm not sure if i'm going to keep this one i know i got a couple of these spare ones since i got other razor projects in the garage here you'll notice that it's actually missing a few pieces such as the rear cover and the frame surface is deeply scratched, got a little bit of surface rust, but that doesn't really matter too much since I'm planning on stripping this go-kart down to bare frame, refinishing it and redoing everything. I gotta say, one of my least favorite things about this go-kart is how small it is. Obviously it's made for little kids, but I'm not a very big dude, I'm five foot eight and I'm pretty cramped on here. So that's probably one of the first things I'm gonna modify is make more space. I'm thinking about sliding the seat back, but Let's go started on tearing this thing down. I really like how Razor designed the motor mount on these older carts. You'll notice there's a jam nut here and then a tensioner adjustment bolt that raises and lowers the motor mount plate. It swings off the hinge over here, which is another jam nut. That just gives you a lot of range of adjustment for the chain tension. So I'm likely gonna keep that design. I might just consider sliding the motor back. So drilling some new holes so I can slide the seat back. What I'm thinking about doing on this rear section is cutting off the top portion of the controller bracket so that I can bend the plate down so we can have as much flat, clean surface area to mount batteries and controllers on. And here's how the mounting plate ended up looking like. It's not perfectly square around the edges, but I just needed this portion to be relatively flat so I can mount a controller here. Then hopefully this is enough space for the batteries. The next hurdle that we have to overcome is modifying the seat so that there's clearance for this bracket and this portion of the frame. Since I do want to slide it back a whole two inches, I think that's going to make the seating position a lot more comfortable. And here's how that ended up looking like. I slid the seat back exactly two inches, just enough so I can use the original mounting hardware for the rear hole, but use it on the front hole of the seat. And I cut away just enough material so that the seat would sit flat on the frame. And I made a cutout so I can still make adjustments to the motor mount and tensioner bracket. Yeah, sliding the seat back two inches is definitely needed. I can't even imagine having less space than this.
All right, guys, got the cart down to bare frame now. I just left the rear axle on because I don't feel like messing with the bearings and taking the rear axle apart. I can easily just tape that off while we're refinishing it. What I found shocking is this disgusting amount of hair curled up into the rear axle on this side. Look at that. That is gross. I cannot wait to get rid of this and toss that in the trash. That was probably messing with the bearing on this side, but this is what I was talking about as far as the non live rear axle. On the right side, there's a keyed portion that locks the right wheel. We do not have that on the left side. So I'm probably gonna have to get a sleeve welded and fabricate a key to make sure that both rear wheels break loose whenever we're hitting the throttle. Kind of like having a welded diff on a drift car. Here's what the original wheels looked like. This is the one on the back left side. See, it's just riding on bearings and hair. And then the one on the right side has the keyed portion to make sure that it's locked with the rear axle. That's why it is wearing down faster than the left side. So I'm gonna be replacing both these wheels with a fresh set of Razor Super Sliders. I believe this is the same uh, set that comes with the Drift Edition. So it actually sits a little taller. So the cart's probably gonna sit almost an inch higher than it originally did, which I don't have a problem with. I think it'll actually look a little better with a bigger wheel set. Got some new hardware with that. So you'll notice both of these are keyed. So they're meant to be locked with the rear axle. So I'll go over this in more detail on the next video. Right now, I just wanna get down to stripping this thing down. Also, let me know what color you guys would like to see me paint this frame. Comment below. All right guys, well, I've got a lot of sanding to do. I wanna make sure that this frame is properly prepped for paint since I want the finish to be durable because I'm likely gonna be beating on this cart quite a bit. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with this drift cart project, consider subscribing to this channel. If you are interested in checking out any of the items I'm using for this project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.